broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the Aculon Working From Home webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about why surfaces matter. My name is Edward Hughes. I'm the CEO of Aculon, and I'm joined with me uh, today with Mario Gattuso, who's our Senior Business Development Manager, and he'll help me as we get into this uh, webinar presentation. From a logistical perspective, uh, the webinar will be recorded. Uh, the slides will be sent to you afterwards. We'll be sending a link uh, so that you can share that with your colleagues uh, and obviously go back over any details we covered. If you have any questions during the webinar, please go to the GoToMeeting question tab and type them in, and we'll try to leave as much time as possible at the end uh, for dealing with the questions. So firstly, thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope everybody is well and safe. Obviously, we're going through a unprecedented pandemic, uh, which has surprised all of us with not only its scope, but the speed at which it's taken over. Uh, and obviously the stakes. Uh, so I do hope everybody is safe. Uh, and obviously, probably like many of you on the webinar today, uh, we've had to adapt. Uh, I'm working from home, so is Mario working from home. Uh, and while that is a different situation than normal, I have to say it gives me great faith in humanity, the ability for people to adapt. Uh, and I've been certainly very impressed with my colleagues in our organization about their ability to, to work. They're on, are on the you know, computer at 8 a.m., they're working through to 5 p.m., they are doing what they're supposed to do, and they are working from home. So uh, I'm sure many of you are like that as well. Uh, we are uh, deemed as an essential company by the Department of Homeland Security as we supply many uh, medical device companies. Uh, and so uh, our lab and our production team are operational. Uh, we are continue to ship and meet orders. Uh, we continue to test with customers' products uh, as they come in. But we wanted to share with you this webinar uh, so that, you know, to let you know we'll be there for you when we come out of this. And obviously we will come out of this. Uh, and our goal basically is that at Aculon, we want to enable customers to make better products by being an innovative, fast, responsive a developer and producer of best-in-class surface modification technologies. We believe that together we can create winning products. So today I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of an overview of Aculon. Some of you may not be familiar with us. Talk about some of the technology platforms, some surface modification options, go into some examples of the types of things that we do at Aculon in electronics, oil and gas, specialty, cover our lab services uh, business, and then open it up for question and answers. At Aculon, we are involved in many different industries. As you can see from the different pictures on this slide, uh, we cover a lot of different bases. And so, you know, we have built up a great expertise in surface modification across a broad range of industries. We were founded in 2004, and our expertise really is around developing and producing surface solutions to modify a broad variety of surfaces, metals, glass, and polymers. We've built a whole business on surface modification. We give customers the functionality of having hydrophobic or superhydrophobic, oleophobic, hydrophilic, anti-fingerprinting, or adhesion promotion uh, functionality to their surfaces. Our treatments are thin. Uh, they are easy to apply. We do not use any vacuum chamber technology. Uh, often no cure is is needed. Uh, they are safe, they are non-toxic, and we offer green options as well. How we differentiate ourselves from some large coding companies is that not only do we create proprietary innovative treatments, but we work with customers to solve their problems. We don't believe in just throwing a, a coding at somebody and say, here, go figure it out. We're organized into three groups, electronics, oil and gas, especially, which includes our medical device area. And our business model is we produce chemistry uh, and we ship the chemistry to people. On occasion, we do treat some people's parts, but that's generally a very specialist area. The vast majority of what we do is production and sale of chemistry. We have over 35 patents. We have worked on thousands of surface applications and we've invested hundreds of thousands of hours building up our expertise. We have over 100 products. Our people are smart, numerous chemists, PhDs, master's degrees. We have a lot of electrical engineering people as well. 
and we are global. We are based in San Diego. That's where our headquarters is. That's where our lab, our application development and manufacturing. Um, we have offices in Shanghai, Singapore, Dallas, Amsterdam, and we have distributors across Asia. So you join this call uh, because you want to understand more about surface applications. So why do surfaces matter? Well, what's interesting is interaction with surfaces, materials, uh, other things, can create problems. And so what we do with surface modification technologies is find a way to address a variety of those problems. I'm going to give you 10 examples of the kind of things that we deal with. So we can see issues when a liquid is coming on a surface uh, and creates some functionality that was undesirable. Uh, people have surfaces they don't want to be cleaned. It's either time consuming or in some cases it's impossible to get there. So they need to have that surface staying clean over a long period of time. Think of an oil storage tank, for, for example. Uh, other cases, uh, fingerprints will get on the surface and degrade the aesthetic performance or behavior of that surface. That wasn't what the designer wanted. Water or oil droplets can impede optical performance. If you've got specialist medical or sensor devices and water or oil gets in there, you, the devices don't work as well. In other cases, uh, adhesive materials stick to surfaces. It could be adhesives, it could be epoxies, and the designers don't want that material sticking to that particular surface. In some cases, the surface is not lubricious enough. If you're in the medical device area, you may need something that to be more lubricious. In other cases, the wettability of the surface or on a powder is not ideal, and you want to modify that wettability to tune it to get the performance you're looking for. Other cases, you'll see uh, the adhesion between the substrate and the adhesive is poor. And can you use surface modification technologies to basically create a chemical reaction to improve the bonding between those surfaces? We do a lot of work where we see electronics fail because water ingress into that device, whether it's a handheld device or whether it's a another, you know, more larger device. Uh, water creates problems, obviously, in electronics. And in some cases, you can't create a physical barrier to prevent liquid flow, so you have to create a chemical barrier to basically uh, keep that uh, surface clean and not allow the liquid to be on that surface. So we've built a whole technology and company around this. When the company started back in 2004, it was based on some technology license from Princeton University relating to self-assembled monolayers of phosphonates. And that's a very good versatile technology where we're able to basically bond the SAMP into the oxide layer on that surface. It's a phosphonic acid and basically we're able to tune the functional tail group to repel oil, water and other types of things. And it's a monolayer, it's less than five nanometers thick. That technology was you know, versatile in that we could basically tailor that R group to create strong, strong chemical bonds, to be resistant to abrasion, it was chemically resistant, it's thermally stable, uh, and lots of different functionalities uh, that we could do there. So that was the start of our company. Since then, we've built a series of surface modification platforms and capabilities around that. And this has been all basically relating to customer requirements over the years. As customers have asked us for different issues or felt with different issues, uh, we've added technologies to basically deal with that. And so now, as you, what we do at Aculon is we basically look at the substrate that you are dealing with, and we try to match the chemistry to that uh, to meet the functionality you want. So if you are metal and oxide containing surfaces, and it could be metals or it could be ceramic semiconductors, glass, we have a bunch of different treatments out there for repellency and some for adhesion, uh, some for hydrophilic. Uh, if you are a polymeric uh, surface, you know, you don't have an oxide layer, then we have some options for adhesion, uh, for repellency, nothing yet for adhesion, uh, and we have some hydrophilics. We can also functionalize those surfaces to basically add more capabilities as well. So we cover a lot of different surfaces. So let's talk about our platforms. So everything around what we do is built around the core of surface modification. So we do hydrophobic, adhesion, water barrier, oilophobic, particle treatment, anti-fingerprinting, hydrophilic type treatments. Let me uh, talk about some of those and just explain what those are. 
So if you're looking at a hydrophobic treatment here, you can see from this picture a water droplet's beaded up on the surface. Uh, that is designed to basically change the surface energy of that surface so it repels water away from that. And we can do that in hydrophobic uh, treatments, we can do that in super hydrophobic treatments. Uh, those treatments are optically uh, clear, they're thin, uh, so they have no impact uh, visually on the surface of that, and they're flexible, right? We can coat many varieties of surfaces with hydrophobic type treatments. Oleophobic treatments are ones where we are looking to basically keep oil and some other uh, fluids off that surface, right? Uh, so you want to repel that surface from, you know, oils. Uh, and again, they are, you know, we measure contact angles for that. Uh, these are ultra thin, they're optically clear. Uh, they leave the surface looking clean and intact. Uh, and we can do that for a pretty broad variety of industries uh, and uh, surfaces. When we talk about adhesion promotion, we don't make adhesives in of itself. We make a adhesion promotion treatment that essentially acts as a primer. It basically helps functionalize that surface directly. Uh, and that will basically, as you apply the next layer to it, you can get a better bonding so you can reduce delamination or adhesive failure uh, by doing that. In some cases, we've seen that by basically using this type of primer, you don't have to do the traditional roughening of the surface to promote the adhesion. So it may allow you to reduce the thickness. And that's, it's a flexible uh, te technique. It can be used with numerous oxides and variety of functional uh, adhesives. When we talk about hydrophilic treatments, what we're talking about, as you can see in this picture on the right-hand side, here the water is wetting out. So on the far right and the untreated side, you are seeing a water droplet, which is a standard water droplet. It's got a low contact angle, 40 or 50, something like that. Um, and it's basically just sitting on the surface. On the left-hand side, the treated side, now you, the water wets out essentially sheets across the whole surface. So it basically, it, it likes that surface and just spreads out. In some cases, we can tune it down to less than 10, 10 degrees water contact angle. We can tune it to 20 or 30 degrees, depending on what you're looking to do. Again, those, those treatments are ultra thin, they're optically clear, and they don't impact the surface of that. Durability, that's really a, an interesting one for hydrophilics. It really depends on the application. So uh, in some cases, we can get very durable. And in other cases, it's, it's more challenging. Depends on that substrate. Uh, particle treatments, uh, here's what we can do here. We look at you know these basic particles and a customer is looking to functionalize that and it could be changing the surface energy of that, it could be wanting to wet it out, it could be adding hydrophobic layer to that so it, it helps with dispersing those particles, uh, a variety of different applications. Uh, and we apply liquid-based treatments uh, to those particles in bulk uh, and so it's a pretty straightforward and scalable process uh, but allows us to functionalize particles and powders uh, depending on how the customer wants to tune them. When we talk about anti-fingerprinting coating, this is a relatively new area for us, but we've made some tremendous progress in the last couple of years. Uh, you can see in the image here on the right-hand side, an untreated part of a glass slide. You can see the obviously the oils and the grease from a fingerprint uh, quite, quite visibly on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, you, you can see it's reduced. I would tell you that getting a reduction in the visibility of fingerprint obviously is, is great. Uh, we have not been able to eliminate the fingerprints, uh, but we've learned a lot about the things that go into helping to reduce fingerprints. And obviously a treatment has an impact, but there are some other uh, knobs that we dial basically to uh, tune that in to reduce the overall visibility of, of the fingerprints. Um, so, you know, these coatings, again, are robust, they are durable, they last a long time, uh, and they can certainly help with the aesthetics of uh, a device. Uh, similarly, the anti-fingerprint coatings help with cleaning. Uh, so, in the case where you have an untreated surface versus a, uh, a treated surface, uh, they're easy to clean, and so the, the fingerprint or, the, you know, whatever's on that surface will wipe off uh, with just a simple dry cloth. You don't need to be spraying solvent onto these surfaces, uh, and, and again, they are robust uh, in their nature, uh, and so uh, you can handle them. A lot of work has gone into waterproofing. Waterproofing, for many of you, is a is a issue. 
uh, whether it's automotive or industrial applications or appliances or handheld electronics or even medical devices. You know, if the device is exposed to the water, whether it's outdoor rain or humidity, or it could be splashing uh, inside, uh, it can, if it gets into the device, the device can fail. Uh, and that's obviously not what you want to have. So, so we've developed a series of waterproofing treatments uh, that can help protect those devices against a range of exposures from humidity to all the way to submersion. And one of the things that we do from a technology standpoint, we, we want to make sure that everything we offer to our customers is, is easy to apply. Uh, we don't do vacuum chambers. They are slow. They are capital intensive. Um, so we do processes that are, it can be as simple as dip applied, it can be spray applied, it can be wipe or roll to roll. Uh, and we work with our customers to dial in the parameters of the treatments, whether it's the concentrations or the types of solvent, you know, to get the right kind of coverage. And obviously, you know, uh, whether you need a cure or not, we'll work with you to determine that. And that's, that's you know, these, these treatments are designed for high volume manufacturing uh, opportunities out there. So, uh, so they're designed to be very scalable. Let me uh, cover a couple of things that we, we do specifically so you understand a bit more about our products. Now we've talked a bit about the, the technology and the types of uh, treatments that we offer. As I say, we're organized by electronics, oil and gas and specialty. So in electronics, we have a variety of products. We have uh, NanoClear, which is the number one global stencil uh, nano coating. We have a series of products in the nano proof side uh, that are designed to protect the PCBs uh, in particular from water migration or oil getting into them. Uh, they can provide moisture barriers. They can prevent silver uh, migration. Uh, we use them as underfill dams and, and connector coatings. Uh, we have anti-fingerprint treatings, which are used on laptops, appliances, packaging. Uh, we have some tr technologies for epoxy control for semiconductor wafers, uh, leaf frame, mold flash, and, and we have some stuff on test pins as well for semiconductor. So NanoClear is the uh, number one global stencil nano coating. It's been around for about seven years. It's an extremely thin flux repellent uh, film that's applied to the underside of the stencil. Uh, there's been lots of data and tests to show that it improves quality, uh, boosts productivity, uh, and reduces costs. So uh, it's, it's been a really good product. We like to say this is it's cheap. It's easy and it works every time. We have, this product has treated hundreds of thousands of stencils and probably billions of apertures uh, and we never get complaints that it doesn't do its job. So uh, the product came out in uh, 2014. Uh, it's been uh, fortunate to have been you know, covered by many good publications and lots of stories and cover stories about it uh, because it's helped solve a lot of problems out there and basically just makes printing easier. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you have a slight temperature, et cetera, you take Advil and you feel better. If you have a printing issue, uh, then, you know, use NanoClear. It works every time. Uh, it's, you know, the benefits are easily quantifiable uh, and, uh, you know, it's a great product. For anti-fingerprinting, we offer several different treatments uh, that can be used, whether it's uh, uh, for handheld electronics, whether it's for stainless steel appliances, whether it's for packaging. Uh, and that's kind of an emerging area because obviously you know, a lot of designers have spent a lot of time trying to get it right and trying to make their, their products look as good as possible. For Nanoproof, this is our series of waterproofing uh, technologies uh, where we go from humidity to full immersion because not everybody needs kind of protection against full immersion. If you have a device that's you know mounted to the outside of a house or a wall or a camera or something like that, you're probably not planning on the uh, device being uh, fully immersed. So we've got a variety of technologies. Um, the application equipment we use is, is affordable and uh, readily available. And we try to work with customers to understand exactly what they're looking for in terms of waterproofing. You know, so uh, we, we work with them to understand the IPX level they want to go with, whether it's IPX3, you know, basically splashing water, or to IPX8, where they're looking for full immersion. And over the years, we've added a series of products uh, that basically have increased their performance, particularly as we've worked more in the handheld uh, device type area. Uh, and so you can bet basically get to IPX8 level types of production. 
But not only just do they have waterproofing, we have products that basically have uh, options for push-through connectivity, which allows you to connect the display or some other connector after the application of the treatment. Obviously, if you're doing some kind of vacuum deposition process or some standard conformal coating, uh, you can't do that. You'll have to mask the areas, etc. This allows you to basically push through and make those connections. Uh, similarly, as electronics have become more requires greater requirements for flexibility, uh, we have coatings now that can do 180 degree bend. They don't crack. Uh, so again, if you're looking at some of the other types of coatings, whether vacuum deposition or whether you're looking at uh, standard conformal coatings, you're not going to get that kind of flexibility. Uh, and so again, if you're looking for electronics that have flexibility, we have options. Uh, and we also have green and VOC exempt options so that basically uh, if you are looking to reduce the amount of uh, VOCs in the atmosphere from the facility, etc., we can give you options for that. So we have a range of different products uh, in the nanoproof side. They deliver a range of different IPX level benefits, again, because in many cases you're not looking for full submersion. Uh, all of them can be done as an inline process, so you're not looking at kind of batch processes, slow uh, ramp up uh, of chambers and, and pump downs. Uh, all of them are non-toxic. Uh, all, some of them have this push-through connectivity, which again, if that's important to you, uh, our technical people can work with you to help to find the right selection. Some of them have flexibility, which again, if you're looking for that in your particular devices, uh, that's great. And some of them also have green VOC exempt. So we have a variety of things. What we do is we basically work with our customers to figure out what their requirements are, such that we can help pick the right solution for them. And in doing so, what we're trying to do is reduce product returns because of water damage. Uh, we're trying to give you increased yields in your facilities because these uh, treatments or coatings can be reworked, uh, so you're not scrapping uh, boards. Um, in many cases, no or minimal masking is required. They are all safe and non-toxic where you don't need to add you know, uh, scrubbers to the uh, factory to basically uh, you know, take out some of the toxic fumes that you get when you do some of the vacuum deposition type processes, and they're all affordable. Uh, the process for application is going to depend a bit on the treatment. Uh, some are greater viscosity than others, uh, so we have options for spray, which is obviously great for high volume manufacturing. Uh, if you are looking for selective deposition and tight, uh, they can be jetted or, the, or dispensed. Or if you have a, a low volume and you don't want to be spending a lot of capital, then we have dip-based options as well. All of our treatments basically come with UV uh, tracer built into the uh, to the treatment. Uh, so whether you do a have a handheld inspection unit, you can check to make sure that the uh, board is fully treated, or whether you have an automated inspection unit, uh, you can do that. Uh, in oil and gas, we do a couple of things. We've partnered with an oil service company to basically treat rock formations down well uh, for enhanced oil recovery to basically reduce water blockages. Um, for anti-fouling, uh, we have a number of applications, uh, whether it's uh, uh, stainless steel tubing and storage tanks to you know, b prevent basic paraffin or acetylene buildup over time, uh, whether it's oil spill containment booms, trying to keep the oil off those booms as those are brought back in, or whether it's uh, sensors that have sapphire probes in them uh, that basically you know, don't want oil wetting out on the surface. Uh, a lot of different applications in that space. In the specialty markets, uh, we do a number of medical devices, some sapphire optics, cutting tools, wheel weight adhesion, particle treatments. We treat uh, components for Swiss watches, uh, guitar strings, uh, movie screens to prevent uh, uh, oil from popcorn oil and dust building up on the screens, uh, optical stuff. We have a number of customers that are public in terms of their application of what we do. Uh, for them, obviously, the majority of the cases, uh, you know, we are under confidentiality agreement with them, but these are already kind of public. Uh, and as a company, I like to think that we win our business because we help you get uh, to hit the target. So in many cases, we hear about companies, customers that come to us that they, uh, 
they were sent a sample or two from someone else and kind of basically with a hey, good luck, they hope this works out for you. Uh, and that doesn't always hit the target. It's kind of a hit and miss type of thing. If you're firing uh, an arrow from a long distance away, you want to basically try to make sure you get the target. So, so we work on, with you on a process. Uh, so we spend time up front to try and really understand what your requirements are. Uh, we will then you know, offer you lab services where we can have parts brought in. We treat the parts. We analyze those parts. We characterize the parts. Uh, we then provide the customer back with those parts. The customer can test them, can provide feedback. Uh, hopefully it works the first time, but in many cases, you no, know, we need a tweak. We need something to change. It could be, uh, you know, we didn't get the part clean enough to start with. It could be the application methodology wasn't perfect, or it could be that we have, you know, basically a tweak to the chemistry that we are providing. So we go through an optimization process with you that optimizes the application, the right treatment, etc., the right process for cleaning uh, that allows us to basically get a select selection and recommendation. At that point, you can then put it into the customer, into your plant trial, uh, and with luck, we hit the bullseye. That's kind of what we do. It's an analytical approach that's collaborative. Uh, we want customers that collaborate with us and explain what they're trying to do and, and the issues they're facing. Uh, from an IP and expertise uh, standpoint, I kind of call it a combination of hard and soft. Uh, we have over 35 patents. We've got many trade secrets. We've treated tens or thousands of applications. We have a partnership with UCSD that gives us access to millions of dollars of analytical equipment if we need it, if we don't have that equipment in the lab. Uh, we've spent hundreds of thousands of hours solving surface-related problems. We've invested millions of dollars uh, in building these capabilities and expertise in this area. We also want to be a good citizen of the planet uh, and do the right things. And I know many of you as customers also have sustainability goals. Uh, so we want to offer you product that basically complies with your goals or your particular regulations in whatever part of the world you're at. Uh, so we have products that are VOC exempt. Uh, we have all our products in PFOA free products. Uh, we use eco-friendly packaging and waste reduction. Uh, we try to be as efficient as possible in transportation-related emissions. Uh, and as a company, we believe in using sustainable energy. And so, you know, we've done a number of things to basically uh, reduce our carbon footprint as well. So as a company, we are a platform technology company that makes customers' products better. That's what we do. Uh, we are surface solutions experts. We have a strong history of working with customers to solve problems. That's kind of one of our greatest strengths. We have a broad portfolio of products, including more sustainable options. We've got great IP, great testing capabilities, uh, great in-house expertise, and we want to help solve problems. So with that, uh, let me uh, look at some of the questions and open up the question box here. Okay. Bunch of questions coming in. Let me uh, see if I can make that bigger. Okay. What is the resistance of the surface treatment with time and temperature? How is it affected by uh, temperature and mechanical friction, for instance, for lubrication purposes? of metal used in medical applications? How would the surface treatment survive sterilization? Uh, so a lot of different questions uh, in there. So uh, how are the treatments uh, affected by time and temperature? So they are stable once they are on the surface. Uh, temperature, it depends on uh, the particular treatment. Some of our SAMPs can be at, I think, 2, 225C. Uh, some of the others can go higher than that. Uh, sterilization, yes, we have worked on that. Uh, on that, uh, and you know, we can. Uh, if you want to send us an email, we can give you some information on that. And Mario, if you want to jump in on any of that, uh, let me let me know. Uh, yeah, so we've we've done um, some long-term stability testing um, with regards to temperature and time on a wide variety of our technologies. Um, most, uh, as a whole, are robust to. Um, over 225 Celsius, um, and we have 
we have data on predicted lifetimes at various temperatures for each of these technologies, but um, again, that depends on the selected technology. Um, so ho hopefully that helps to clear things up. Uh, do we have distributors in Europe? Uh, no, we have an operation in Europe where we uh, uh, ship out of a, a warehouse in Rotterdam. Uh, we have sales representation in Europe. So if you have uh, uh, any needs for Europe, then uh, reach out to us and we can put you in touch with the right people. Uh, I'm going to give you this one, Mario. How do you approach sub-zero temperature surfaces? Um, well, that's that's a good question. Um, so I don't think we've ever been asked to treat a sub-zero temperature surface. So that would be a, that would be probably a, a unique um, application for us. Um, if the question is after a surface is treated, will a sub-zero um, temperature impact the performance of the coating. Um, no, the, the coatings will survive um, sub-zero temperatures. These are all um, monolayers. They're not like a traditional cross-link coating that may crack um, or delaminate um, during temperature cycling, so they're stable at sub-zero temperatures. Now, the liquid you're looking to repel or to have the behavior change may behave differently itself due to the temperature change, so we can discuss that on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, another one for you. What are the cure times for your nanoproof products? Uh, the nanoproof products are all designed uh, to be uh, very easy and fast to apply. Uh, so these are all air dry systems <clears throat> depending on the specific nanoproof, depending on the application method and the amount of material put down you'll typically find that they're tack free in the range of 10 seconds to a minute and then fully cured in the range of say 10 minutes to an hour. Okay, uh, I'm looking for a primer for low carbon steel. Is this an error? So we can treat that. The, the challenge with carbon steel is it's not a very stable oxide layer, so it's a spoiling layer on that. So uh, we've done some work in this area. We can probably help you. Mara, you wanna jump in? Uh, no, Edward, you pretty you pretty much covered it. We we can we can treat that surface, but um, the the nature of the oxide layer does does make it uh, somewhat difficult. Uh, another question: Do you have experience with food safety? We some of our treatments have been approved uh, by the FDA for food contact. Uh, so uh, as you probably are aware, those are customer specific and uh, application specific treatments. But yes, we do have uh, some experience with that. Uh, okay, for specialty blending of surfactant products, are there tank surface treatments available to promote liquid drainage or repellency or re reduce rinse enough? Uh, yes, so we do, we've treated quite a lot of tanks. Uh, so that would basically, again, you if it's a stainless steel tank in particular, then uh, yep, uh, we can treat that surface and basically it will help the liquid uh, drain and so we've done that on even uh, tankers for uh, paint, uh, transportation of paint, etc., which uh, obviously can uh, 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 obviously designed to stick to the surface. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, we are considering your nanoproof 8.4a with other coatings. We had issue with product sticking to sharp corners after dipping. Does the 8.4 pull back from the sharp edges? Uh, also, does the push through connectivity feature? So, you want to take that one, Mario? So, the concern is uh, the 8.4 AES is designed so it covers the edges of the components because if it doesn't cover the edges of the components, then generally you are going to be creating a, a area that could result in the device failure. So it is designed to uh, to do that. Um, and, then that's, asked, and, that's, go ahead. and that's correct. Edward, can you repeat the second portion of the question? I didn't quite catch it. Uh, well, he's just got another. Uh, does the push through feature imply that the coating stays soft or is easily removed? Uh, yes. So that the push through feature um, does imply that the pin or the connector is able to push through the coating. 
Um, so yes, that does that does imply that the coating is um, has a low modulus and is soft in nature. It doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to remove, um, but the the treatments that do not offer push through connectivity are the ones that form a more crystalline type film. Yeah, so obviously if you're applying it to a printed circuit board, you're not expecting to see that circuit board, you know, get a lot of abrasion or something like that. So it has, it's going to stay on the surface of that, but if you abraded it away, obviously you'd be damaging the components, let alone the, uh, the treatment. Uh, what spraying equipment do you recommend for your nanoproof products? Uh, we work with a variety of people. We work with Nordson, we work with PVA, we work with some vendors in China, etc. cetera. Uh, you can go from uh, handheld, benchtop, you know, easy to use kind of units all the way up to, uh, you know, high volume manufacturing kind of uh, very fast speed units. So, uh, so the treatments are designed to be work with a, a number of different uh, people. Uh, what are the mechanical durability test methods used for the coatings? Uh, there's there's a, a bunch of them, um, but I mean, obviously, a lot of abrasion studies is is a fairly standard. We do some uh, uh, other chemical resistance studies as well. And Mara, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, that, that's right. We have a good understanding of the chemical stability of most of these coatings, um, and then for um, abrasion durability, we, we utilize, we have a few um, linear taper abraders um, in our facility. Um, and so we will, we will treat parts um, and then we will expose them to um, abrasion with different abrasives and different um, force levels to see um, how the behavior changes over time with the number of abrasion cycles. Um, and we do find that um, because we're working um, with monolayer type treatments, very, very thin treatments, that the, the robustness of the substrate can have an impact on, on um, the, the performance and lifetime. So it is, we, we usually, usually do this uh, 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 per the application and per the substrate. Um, but most of these technologies are designed to be um, very, very robust, uh, you know, so long as you're not damaging the substrate itself. And along that lines, there's a question regarding mechanical robustness of use for anti-fouling technologies inside a heat exchanger system. Same situation there. So these are um, these repellency coatings are covalently bound to the substrate. Um, so long as they're not exposed to any damaging chemicals, which in general tend to be caustic type chemicals, it's not the case for everything. Um, but as long as caustics uh, or high pH chemicals are not involved in abrasion that damages the underlying substrate itself is not involved, then the lifetime and durability uh, is quite long. Okay, another one for you, Mario. Is the nanoproof a <laughs> coat replacement or can it be applied over other coatings? Uh, the the nanoproof is designed to stand alone. Um, but depending on the coating, there's no reason that it couldn't be coated over another coating. It's, it's designed to be um, essentially agnostic as far as what the substrate it's treating is. It's, it's, it'll coat um, polymeric surfaces, it'll coat metal surfaces, glass surfaces, um, ceramics. Um, so we can discuss uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, but it should be fine to do either way. Okay, another question is, uh, you say the coatings are non-toxic. We've had some issues with vacuum deposition. Uh, yeah, again, these are non-toxic coatings. So uh, we've heard of obviously people having issues with uh, uh, vacuum deposition coatings. The uh, vapors coming out are uh, toxic, so you've got to put some equipment in to change that. So uh, this, these aren't the case. These are solvent-based, uh, so they're generally, uh, they dry in place, uh, and you just need good ventilation. Um, okay, I think that's that's all the questions. So again, thank you very much for attending this webinar. We wish you a safe and hopefully uh, healthy uh, time period ahead and as we get out of this uh, working from home kind of situation and we'll get back to work in a normal manner. And we look forward to working with you when we do that. We will be sending out uh, an email later today with uh, links to the uh, presentation, links to the recording of the presentation, uh, and contact information if you have uh, further questions. So with that, 
I want to thank everybody and wish you a happy, healthy, and good rest of the day. Thank you.